Hello, I'm JW, looking at earthing again, and specifically earth electrodes, and uh, it's in the same garden we were before, uh, where that uh, electrode was put in. It's winter again, as you can see, and it's actually uh, starting to rain as well, so the ground is very wet. And you'll notice the hedge has disappeared because it was very tiresome and uh, it's been got rid of. Now, so we looked at electrodes before with that rod, which is uh, all very well, but rods do have a disadvantage in that uh, you have to really check what you're driving it into because obviously there's pipes, cables or whatever else hidden underground. You don't want to be ramming it into those. And of course, in some terrains, it's impossible to install it. If you've got a lot of rock or whatever, simply not going to work. So today we're going to have a look at that again, just chest test that again quickly. But the main point of this video is to look at an alternative to a rod which is this thing. Now this is called a Condu disc and it's a pretty substantial item here. Weighs in the region of sort of 10 kilograms or so or sort of 22 pounds odd and uh, this is actually a conductive material and you just basically bury this in the ground. It comes with the uh, appropriate wire already attached there and uh, this is uh, supposed to be as good as an electrode of a certain length and uh, obviously a lot easier to install than driving uh, things deep into the ground and also a lot safer of course because you don't have then the danger of uh, poking it through underground services or whatever else. So we're going to stick this in the ground and just see uh, how it works and we're going to compare it to the rod that we put in uh, last year. Now to have a quick look at this it's basically uh, wire attached. What's inside here is a large metal disc. This copper wire already comes attached to it and this is a conductive material and this is supposed to last for decades when buried, so it's not sort of a few years, it's supposedly up to about 60 years that this is intended to last. And this again is extremely durable, it's not going to sort of break, crumble or drop to pieces. And say weighs in a region of sort of 10 kilograms or so. It does come with these screws if you wanted to bolt it down, say you had some rock or concrete underground, you could uh, obviously drill the holes and then uh, bolt it down. And this company also makes a conductive concrete, which you may look at another time, which you can then use in conjunction with this, or in some cases on its own with a copper wire as well. But I'm going to look at this one today. Here's the bag it comes in. So uh, Condi Disc is the name of the product there. This is actually a North American product, and this one actually comes with uh, number six sized wiring. That's um, American uh, wire gauge there. But uh, as you can see, it's a pretty substantial size. Might be better if it was uh, marked in uh, millimetres for the UK and Europe, but uh, that's uh, basically that. Um, company this one is from is called SAE, and uh, I'll put their details in the description for this video. Now, so these are intended for permanent use, obviously, so you can uh, bury them in the ground, but you could use these temporarily as well for things like uh, temporary installations, such as sort of events and that sort of thing, where you have a generator. So you could actually just bury this in the ground fairly shallow. And then, of course, you could remove it and take it away with the generator. And that's going to be a lot better than just randomly poking a little stake or something in the ground, because in a lot of these event places, of course, that's going to be very difficult anyway, because the ground's going to be fairly hard. And again, you've got that risk of uh, driving spikes through hidden services, which you may not be aware of. Now, of course, this is considerably more expensive than a single earth electrode. However, the time saved in installation and, of course, avoiding the danger of driving it through a gas pipe or something, Obviously, uh, consider that as part of the overall cost. Bear in mind, if you're going to be digging a hole anyway to install, say, an electric vehicle charging pedestal or something like that, you're already going to be digging a hole anyhow, so it's just a question of shoving this in the exact same hole. Now, what's in there is that earth rod we put in last year. I've seen that in the other videos. I've connected the test wires up to it already. And I've also put the wires in all the, the garden, and we've seen that in the other video, so I won't go into the details of that, particularly here. Now, so we can do a direct comparison. We've got the, say, one in there we had before. Now, I'm just going to shove this in here, temporarily at least. So, just dug a hole there. It's not particularly deep. I mean, this would normally be buried, say, a couple of feet down or more. But uh, in this case, we're just going to shove it in that fairly shallow hole. And we're just going to cover it up with that soil there and then see what kind of readings we can get from it. So, it's in the ground there. And it's about uh, 12 inches underneath the soil there. Just left the wire poking out the top as this is only a temporary demonstration. But uh, again, this could be the sort of thing you were doing, let's say, with a, say, a temporary installation with a generator or something. Just say, put it in the ground there, shallow hole, cover it over. And then, of course, you can uh, get a much better connection, hopefully, than a little rod just poked in by a few inches or a foot or so. So this is the Condi disc. So just start the test going. Again, this takes a while to uh, determine the reading there. Okay, 
Okay, so that's coming out as 331. That is a bit high, but then fairly expected because obviously we've only just shoved it in the ground temporarily there. Now I'll just move the wheel here to the uh, electrode we had put in the ground previously. And again, we'll just start the test going on that one. This was when we had previously about 100, 110 ohm sort of area. So we've seen that uh, two previous episodes. So it's now 142. So and that's increased quite a bit there. So a quick look there at the conduit disc, which uh, so is an alternative to putting a rod in. Obviously the main benefit being is it's much safer as you're not having to spike things into the ground into basically unknown whatever's under there. Now, of course, in a garden like this, it doesn't really matter because obviously we know what's under the ground here, which is basically nothing. Of course, in reality, in a real installation, it's likely to be, say, out in the street somewhere or in other places where you're going to have cables, pipes and all kinds of other stuff concealed. So in those applications, it's going to be a whole lot safer. And of course, you can get scanning equipment to uh, scan the ground or whatever. But again, that costs money as well, takes extra time. And if you scanned the whole area and found it was riddled with pipes, cables, and who knows what, then uh, you still can't put the rod in anyhow. So haven't really achieved a lot. Now I'm gonna leave that disc in there for say, a couple of weeks. We'll uh, come back in a couple of weeks time and just test that again to see if it has changed because bearing in mind the soil on that is relatively loose and it's uh, not particularly compacted down. So it is actually uh, raining now as well. So uh, a bit of water is no doubt gonna get in there. Now it's actually about a month later and we're just going to do those tests again to see what changes there are, if any. And uh, it's not raining today but it's been pretty much wet and uh, drippy for the whole time so no real changes there. So I'm going to do the low current tests out here and then we'll also do the uh, high current ones inside after that. So this is the actual earth electrode, the rod in there. And that's going to be in there for uh, getting on for 18 months or so now. So I'll start that going. Again, this takes a while to do whatever it does. Okay, so we go 148, so uh, fairly consistent with what we had previously. And now we'll just check the uh, disc on the other side. So that's connected up to the disc. And again, start that test going. And previously, again, this was uh, about double the value had previously on the uh, rod there, so should be looking at the 300 area, assuming it hasn't changed. Yep, 302, so fairly consistent with what we had previously. So uh, the uh, rod there, though it's about 50% higher than we had initially, it's still about what we had about a month ago, and the disc again is similar sort of value, about that 300 area. Now for completeness, we'll just do the uh, high current test here. So we've got the green one here, which is from the electrode outside. And the red there is from the socket outlet just behind this cooker here. I'm using that because there's no RCD on this particular circuit. And uh, two wire high current there, so just turn on the power. And then it should do the test on that one. So 160 ohms there. Uh, we'll just do that again just for, because uh, we can basically. 158, so 160 or so ohms there. So that's quite a bit higher than we had originally again, but say uh, fairly consistent with what we had previously outside. Now I'll just change the connection over to that uh, earth disc there, and we'll do the same again. So I'll just change over the wire to the uh, condi disc, so same uh, test again there, and let's see what we get this time. So 324, so again fairly consistent with what we had outside. Just run that again because we can. Yep, 327. So about the same sort of area, had about 300 outside, so again, fairly consistent. So look there at the conduit disc, and uh, getting a reasonable reading there, it's about 300 ohms, which is uh, a fair bit harder than that rod, but bearing in mind it's only just about 12 inches below the ground there. It wasn't uh, put in, I'll say, a permanent thing here. 300 is still perfectly adequate uh, for that. Now, we will be seeing this again because it's actually going to be installed in an actual installation where it's going to be put in the ground somewhat deeper than that. And we're also going to use some of the uh, conductive concrete with it as well. And again, we'll see that at a later time. But uh, that's pretty much it for this video. So until next time, thanks for watching.